Welcome to Present Poetry, a reading podcast with your host, Erin Crittenden. All poems used in this podcast are either public domain or used with permission from the author or the estate. So sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some poetry from the past and the present. This week's featured poet is the one and only Emily Dickinson. Emily Elizabeth Dickinson was born December 10, 1830, in Amherst, Massachusetts, and her father was brief congressman Edward Dickinson. She had two siblings, an older brother Austin, who was a lawyer and her intellectual companion, and her younger sister Lavinia, who was responsible for finding and publishing the poems that we know and love today. Emily's poetry was influenced by the metaphysical poets of the 17th century, including John Keats and Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. It was also influenced by the Book of Revelations, as well as the mixture of Calvinist, Orthodox, and conservative Christian views her small town encouraged. Her poetry also featured themes about death and immortality, as well as the beauty of nature. However, Emily was considered an eccentric by locals, a title she compounded by being reclusive, wearing all white clothing, and being reluctant to greet guests who came to visit her. Later in life, she even refused to leave her bedroom, not even emerging for her father's funeral. It is that reason that Dickinson never married, and most friendships between her and others depended entirely upon written correspondence. Unfortunately, this solitude also prevented Dickinson from being recognized in her lifetime, and it wasn't until after her death on May 15, 1886, that her work became public. Now, Emily Dickinson is regarded as one of America's most innovative and proto-modernist poets, and she even had a museum erected in her honor in 2003 when Amherst College purchased the Evergreens, her family home which had been occupied by the Dickinson family heirs until 1988. Our first poem is titled, In a Library. A precious, moldering pleasure tis to meet an antique book in just the dress his century wore, a privilege, I think. His venerable hand to take and warming in our own, a passage back or two to make to times when he was young. His quaint opinions to inspect, his knowledge to unfold on what concerns our mutual mind the literature of old. What interested scholars most, what competitions ran, when Plato was a certainty and Sophocles a man. When Sappho was a living girl and Beatrice wore the gown that Dante deified, facts centuries before. He traverses familiar as one should come to town and tell you all your dreams were true. He lived where dreams were sown. His presence is enchantment. You beg him not to go. Old volumes shake their vellum heads and tantalize just so. This poem is titled, The Secret. Some things that fly there be, birds, ours, the bumblebee, of these no elegy. Some things that stay there be, grief, hills, eternity, nor this behooveth me. There are that resting rise, can I expound the skies? How still the riddle lies. This poem is called The Lonely House. I know some lonely houses off the road a robber would like the look of, wooden barred and windows hanging low, inviting to a portico where two could creep, one hand the tools, the other peep, to make sure all's asleep, 
old-fashioned eyes, not easy to surprise. How orderly the kitchen looked by night, with just a clock. But they could gag the tick, and mice won't bark, and so the walls don't tell, none will. A pair of spectacles ajar, just stir, and almanacs aware. Was it the mat winked, or a nervous star? The moon slides down the stair to see who's there. There's plunder. Where? Tankard or spoon, earring or stone. A watch, some ancient brooch, to match the grandmama stayed sleeping there. Day rattles, too. Stealth slow. The sun has got as far as the third sycamore. Screams Chanticleer, who's there? And echoes, trains away, sneer. Where? while the old couple, just astir, fancy the sunrise left the door ajar. This poem is titled, A Book. He ate and drank the precious words. His spirit grew robust. He knew no more that he was poor, nor that his frame was dust. He danced along the dingy days, and this bequest of wings was but a book. What liberty a loosened spirit brings. Our last poem today is possibly Dickinson's most famous work, The Chariot. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played, their lessons scarcely done. We passed the fields of gazing grain, we passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice but a mound. Since then tis centuries, but each feels shorter than the day. I first surmised the horses' heads were towards eternity. Thank you for listening to this episode of Present Poetry. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review, share us on social media, or subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you would like to learn more about the featured poet, or you would like your work featured on the podcast, please check out the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.